Oh, hello. Today we're starting a new reading project and I'm thinking of this as sort of like my pile of shame. <laughs> My my books that I keep meaning to get to and not, uh, particularly, I mean, Lord knows I have plenty of books I keep meaning to and not, but these are particularly books I feel judging me from my shelves because I pre-ordered them or I bought them like on the day of release. And if you do that, in theory, I mean, and not even just in theory, in actuality, you are excited to get to them. And then life happens. As a reviewer, I often have like other things that I have to be reading that I've agreed to read for review. And... <laughs> you know, things just kind of get away from you. So I am calling this my like pile of shame read through because I have identified this stack of books that I'm like, I bought this when it came out because I was excited about it. And yet it has just been sitting on my TBR. So I'm going to tell you what all of these are. And then this is just going to be little reading vlog of me finally getting to them. And it should be a very positive reading vlog, I'm assuming, because these are all books that I'm incredibly excited about because I got them when they first came out. Anyway, broken record here. We'll start with the two mass markets. So first I have Wild Rain by Beverly Jenkins. This is a follow-up to Tempest. The main character, the main female character anyway, and this one is the sister of the hero of Tempest. And she was my second favorite character in Tempest. I am very excited to get to this one because she was such a fun heroine and I felt like it, there was an allusion to her having like a really difficult backstory. So I'm excited for her to get her happily ever after. Also, Miss Bev is a treasure. And then the other mass market I had is How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole. This is the beginning of her spinoff series from the Reluctant Royals. And first of all, I just absolutely love how beautiful this cover is. But um, I'm very intrigued by our main character, our female main character, because she was the the attempted ar arranged marriage bride of the hero of the first book. And now she is getting her own story. So I'm very intrigued by this. I think that this will be really good. That is the other mass market that I had. And then I think most of the rest of these are fantasy. There's a couple of mysteries, I guess, thrown in here. But I have A Lots Away by Darcy Little Badger, which I bought last year based on the strength of the premise because it kind of seemed like an urban fantasy mystery kind of setup with indigenous magic kind of elements to it. And uh, I also loved how beautiful this cover was. And then after I pre-ordered it, it was getting amazing reviews. So I actually have this on my five star prediction list. I think I'm really gonna love this. I pre-ordered it, I didn't read it at the time, and I think it's time I rectify that. Then I have a book that has been incredibly loved by so many of my friends, particularly Jess Owens and Ashley from Bookish Realm, and that is Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. I believe this is a debut, and I've just heard amazing reviews of this so far. It's a little girl, it's like middle grade fantasy, and her older brother goes missing, and she's gonna get involved in like a magic school kind of thing. So I think that this will be just delightful. Then a sequel I was excited about, that I just keep not getting to that is YA and that is Blood and Honey by Shelby, Ma Shelby Mahern. I want to read this so that I know if I want to continue in the series because I enjoyed the first one as sort of like light soapy fun and I want to figure out if the first one was just sort of like a one-off for me that it was like yeah I like that one but I don't need more or if I'm like fully bought in to going the distance with this series. It's also a beautiful cover, but uh, yeah. So I wanna read this so I can figure out if I want to read the third one. Then another one that was on my five-star prediction list, and by the way, there's so much of this is YA. Did I mention that? Three, six, six of these eight are YA or middle grade. So I don't know what that means, but for whatever it means, it's the case. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is a mystery. Jennifer Lynn Barnes is my, probably my favorite YA mystery author. And so this is a new series for her that did really well last year. I think I will like it because it sounds like inspiration has been described as the Westing game meets Knives Out, which are two of my favorite mystery type properties. So got an author I love, a premise I love, Hopefully I will love this. And then Root Magic. This is another middle grade fantasy that just really sounded super cute to me. I believe it is set in the South in the 60s, the American South in the 1960s. And it's middle grade fantasy in that setting. So that just sounded really charming and sounds wholesome and lovely, which 
I could definitely use more of it in my life these days. And then finally we have, it was a YA that I thought had fantasy elements to it, but it turns out that it's just a straight up mystery. And that is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. I've seen great early reviews of this. This cover is everything. And it is a mystery set on an indigenous reservation, I believe. And the early reviews have just been fantastic for this. So again, I do love some YA mystery this should be up my alley. So I'm actually really excited. This is sort of an impulsive reading project, but it is accomplishing two things. Well, a few things. It's getting things off of my pile of shame. It is helping me get to books that I have been wanting to get to, but I just, because I have other reading plans, keep feeling like I can't get to. And two of these are part of my five star predictions list. So I'm also making some headway on that. So all around, I think this is going to be a productive and fun reading vlog. So let's get into it. <sighs> Editing Mara popping in here because it looks like my first set of files for when I was reading Root Magic got corrupted. Love that for me. Um, I'm not going to be able to recreate my fresh thoughts at the time, but I really enjoyed this. This is a really just like sweet, wholehearted book. I think is the, what, the term I was using. And um, yeah, I think that thematically this actually reminds me quite a bit of To Kill a Mockingbird. So like if you're looking for maybe like a middle grade version of it that's also own voices, I think this would be a good one. The main character, I forget her name because it's been a few weeks now. Oh yeah, Jezebel, Jez. She is so sweet. All she wants is a friend. And she like, at the beginning they're making a wish and she basically is just like, all I want is a friend. And she, it's real sweet. She has a twin brother and their uncle is teaching them root work after their grandma passes away because they are like root magic practitioners in their family. Um, and it's about, it's like set in the sixties. There's like local law enforcement that's giving them shit because of course it's the sixties in the South. And uh, yeah, I think I gave this three and a half stars. This was really sweet. I think that if you're looking for like just lovely middle grade fantasy in a historical setting also gets pretty dark. Like there's a pretty intense scene with a hag later on. So yeah, overall, this was definitely a good one. I enjoyed this one. Okay, second book down. Oh, I just realized I matched. I've been slogging through this the last few days. and This is a big old disappointment, guys. I'm gonna be nice and give it two stars because it didn't like offend me. And I had moments of like, oh yeah, this is just light and fun, which is what I liked about the first one. But I feel like the characters in this, the main characters are totally different than the way they are in the first book in the series, which is Serpent and Dove. And this is a YA fantasy series that's sort of like witches. There's, I mean, there's like moments of this having some funness in it or goodness in it, but it's just like more than 500 pages of nothing. I just finished it and I seriously can't remember most of what happens. The last like, I don't know, the last like, 50 pages, some stuff starts to happen. But overall, like this is just a big whole lot of nothing. So that's a bummer. That's a real bummer. I was expecting this was gonna be really fun and I was gonna be excited for the third one, but I don't really think I care about the third one anymore. So I'm gonna unhaul this. I'll keep the original one because I did really like that first book, but this is a real sophomore slump in my opinion, which is also sad just because look how pretty this cover is. I'm officially done with that book and <laughs> I can move on to something else. Yeah, I just, I think if what you liked about the original was just like that it was fun, you weren't really thinking about it too much, maybe this would be okay-ish, but I don't know that this is gonna please very many people because I liked the characters in the first one and they're just so different. Lou and Reed, Lou Reed, are just different in this. I mean, Ansel is the real standout of this particular book, but then there's also like a cliffhanger thing with him, so I don't know. I don't know. Let's just move on, shall we? Today is a thrilling day because I am going to the used bookstore for the first time, I think in eight or nine months. Uh, I officially am vaccinated and I just had some blood work done. So I think risk wise with my like immune system, I think I'm okay. So I'm gonna make her into the used bookstore, which I'm really excited about. And then I'm planning today to finish up a lot away. So I'll check back in with you guys once I've done that, but I'm so excited. <laughs> I love the used bookstore so much and I've missed it terribly and I'm excited to take in all of the books that I have to unhaul. It's a good day. Okay, successful run. And actually I ran into somebody who watches the channel, which was so nice. I was so flustered. I didn't catch your name, but thank you for saying hi. I always like it when 
people see me out and about and they say hi in my especially in my natural habitat at McKay's. I got a few Nora Roberts that I'm excited about. So I got these two category historicals, which I didn't realize she did. Like I didn't realize she had any historicals, but here we go. I got Brazen Virtue, which is going to be an adaptation starring Alyssa Milano here in the next little bit. So I figured I would grab a non tie-in copy while I could. And then I also got, I got a nice hardback copy of Year One by Nora Roberts. So this is gonna be helpful for me this summer cause I have like, a thing that I'm doing with this book and with Nora Roberts. So I got some books for reading Roberts and then I also found the old school Borders editions um, of Agatha Christie and the only one that I could justify getting was The Moving Finger because I don't have a hardback copy of this. So I picked this up, but this was nostalgic. When these came out, I was working at Borders, so old school for that. So anyway, productive little used bookstore run. And now I'm gonna go grab some groceries real quick and then I'm gonna film and read, etc., for the day. Okay, I'm done. And I just realized I never actually checked in on this with you guys, but I don't think I'm really doing that for this. Okay, whatever. But I did finally finish a lot soy. This is a really unique book, guys. I, so first of all, this is very superficial, but just like as an object, this is a lovely book. I bookmarked one of my favorite little pieces of illustration, but there is a lot of illustration in this. Uh, the pages seem like they're sewed in. The quality of paper is just thicker and nicer. And as a book, it just feels weightier. So, and I mean, this cover is gorgeous. So I was like, oh God, like one of these publishers went all out. So I looked it up. Levine Carrito is a new indie publisher of children's literature. And this is, I guess, one of their big first big titles, but this is like a lovely object. And this book is pretty unique. I'm not sure that it's like the most unique plot, but it's it's a very interesting combination of vibes because it reads almost like a YA contemporary. Yet the things that are happening are very intense and there is like definitely magic going on. So our main character is Alatsue. She goes by Ellie and she has this ability to raise the dead, mostly with animals. There's very strong dead animal sidekick vibes in this, which is great. But her cousin Trevor dies and it looks like it might be an accident, but he comes to her because she has this ability to communicate with ghosts. He comes to her and says like, this was not an accident. I was murdered by this guy named Dr. Allerton. Allerton Willoughby, I think was the name of the place. And so she goes on, she has her friend Jay, her parents believe her. So like they're going on their way to the funeral. They're gonna like figure out what's going on. This has like almost sort of like a Jolly Japes kind of tone, but with like really serious thematic content. And it's sort of like an urban fantasy kind of setup where like everybody knows about magic, but it's recognizably our world. I don't know, this was just like, a really interesting book. And also I should mention that Alatsue is, her, she and her family are part of the Lipen Apache nation. And so like that's, kind of the origin of her magic. And it almost feels like Scooby-Doo in some places, but what's going on is real and more serious than Scooby-Doo. I don't know, this just struck one of the most interesting tonal vibes I've ever read. I don't know, this is really unique and really interesting. I don't know that the plot fully worked for me, so I think for that reason, I'd probably have to give it a four star, but the main character I absolutely loved and I loved all of her stuff. Like her magic was really cool and I liked all the, the dynamics between the different characters. So like the character work in this was great and the world building was great. I don't know that the plot was my favorite, but anyway, I'm really glad I picked this up because this was, honestly, I originally bought this because I thought the premise sounded cool and I loved the cover and this ended up being kind Kind of a buzzy book last year and for me it definitely lived up to the hype i really enjoyed this so this is my favorite thing i've read so far yeah this is definitely my favorite thing i've read so far so three down i think five more to go four or five more to go keep on trucking here
Okay, um, I woke up this morning and finished off Wild Rain by Beverly Jenkins, and this was good, but not as good as I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> because I just, I really enjoyed Tempest a lot, and this one has a lot of the same elements I enjoyed in Tempest, but not quite the same magic, which is a little sad, but it is really good. It's, um, so Spring is our heroine. She is the sister of the hero from Tempest, and we met her in that book, and she's, like, very independent. She's a rancher in 1880s Wyoming and very like no BS. So she's she's still wonderful in this book. She in the opening pages discovers a dude who basically has been thrown from his horse in the snow and he's like freezing to death. So she takes him in and it turns out this is Garrett McRae and he is a newspaper dude from back east. He also was an escaped slave. So that's a pretty interesting part of his backstory, but he's a reporter from DC. He's coming to interview actually Spring's brother, Dr. Lee, and he gets kind of like thrown from his horse. So they have some like forced proximity stuff. And then basically this is like a book of them falling in love. She has really, really tragic things from her past coming up. So like content warning, violence against women and all the things that come with that. And so that's sort of some of the external conflict. This like, okay, so Garrett is like a cinnamon roll. This has a lot of the elements I like in a book, but there's just something about this one that didn't like have the same magic to me that Tempest did. Something about the ingredients of this one, even though I really liked all of the characters, I just didn't... I don't know, there was just like a, an X factor missing. I also think like, I was sort of on the bubble. I was like, maybe it's just me. But then the um, the actual ending, I feel like was kind of a letdown because in about 25 pages, you have a ton of action and it just, none of it felt like it had enough room to breathe. So I don't know. I think, I mean, I still, it's like a Beverly Jenkins. It's still very enjoyable. I had a good time in this book, but I was expecting this to be like a favorite of the year and it's not quite that. So that's a bummer. Time with Miss Bev is time well spent. So still enjoyable, still good. Just not like, I had very high expectations, I guess, all that to say, and they weren't quite met by this. I'm gonna say a lot so is still, holding strong at my favorite thing so far. Okay, next book down, How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole. I am disappointed in this, guys, and I'm so sad that I'm disappointed because I love Alyssa Cole, and this is maybe my least favorite book I've read from her. I wanna be clear, even a mediocre book from Alyssa Cole is still like a really fun book. So I had a good, good time in this, but relative to my expectations, it just wasn't as delightful <laughs> as I was expecting. So I, the things I do like about this, I really like the conflict for our hero. His name is Sanyu and he is just become king of his country. It's a made up country in Africa and um, he's just become king. He has just like a lot of grief he's going through and really complicated like daddy issues basically because his dad really loved him but also put him in a position to always feel like he wasn't good enough. I liked his conflict. And then Shanti who agrees to become his queen but in this country basically like you aren't really the queen until you become the quote unquote true queen after the trial period of four months. And nobody, like his dad had dozens and dozens of queens <laughs> because like nobody he made it past the four months. So Shanti comes um, and agrees to be his queen, but she's like, I'm gonna make this last. And it's them falling in love. There are some good steamy scenes in here and Shanti is a badass. Like I really liked her character, but the overall plot, I didn't really feel like worked. And I didn't necessarily buy their romance fully. And it's a romance novel, so that's what I really want. There are some interesting like political machinations and stuff. Like I would give this three stars. It's not like, it's like a B kind of book. The only reason it's disappointing is I think of Alyssa Cole as like an A plus kind of author. So I'm sad I didn't like this more, but you know, enjoyed, just didn't love, and I was expecting to love. Okay, guys, I'm so relieved. I was starting to worry that I had lost the ability to feel anything while reading, because it's just been a weird month or so of reading. I don't know. Anyway, 
I'm very happy to report that that is not true because this book destroyed me. So Firekeeper's Daughter is definitely a thriller. It's somewhere between like a, a hard hitting YA contemporary and a thriller. It is set kind of on uh, in and around Sault Ste. Marie in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which is right next to an Ojibwe reservation and our main character is biracial. She is half Ojibwe and half white. Her white family are like the really rich, powerful French Canadian descent family in town. And her mom got pregnant from sort of like this star hockey player, indigenous dude when she was 16. Our main character is Dani. And she is therefore like in both worlds, but not fully feeling accepted in both worlds. Her grandma is really sick and her mom is like really stressed out trying to take care of her. So she decides to defer her um, going to the University of Michigan for a year. She's gonna go to community college for her freshman year. And right when all that's happening, really intense things start happening that she witnesses and she ends up helping the FBI in this investigation. I thought this was such, like this book is really, really hard hitting. It's really emotional. Definitely a lot of content warnings in terms of like racism, murder, drug use, sexual assault. Like there's a lot that goes on in this, but I feel like this is a really great example of a hard hitting YA that doesn't have characters who feel hollow in the service of sort of bigger themes. Like I felt like this really explored a lot about the experience that native women and girls go through in the US. Like it, it's definitely thematically a lot about that, but it didn't feel cheap or unearned. And uh, the writing was really nice. And this is a debut, so very impressive debut. Definitely my favorite thing I've read for this project so far. And like I said, it really destroyed me. <laughs> I really, I wept at several points in this book. And I think the ending is very interesting as well. Yeah, anyway, this is a lot about grief and betrayal and um, being let down by both your society and people around you. It's a lot, but it's really, really good. So if you're looking, I also think this could be a good sort of like transition for adults looking to get into YA thriller or people who normally read YA thrillers wanting something a little more adult. I do think that this is YA, but I think it's kind of a transitional book. So this is really good. I'm glad that this sort of like revived my faith in my own ability to enjoy books wholeheartedly. It's been a few days since I finished Firekeeper's Daughter and these are the last two books I'm supposed to read, Amari and the Knight Brothers and the Inheritance Games. I am so excited for both of these and I am just like not in the mood for YA. I think I YA'd myself out this month. So I am gonna hold off on these cause I'd rather wait a while and read them when I'm actually in the mood. But I wanna go ahead and put this vlog up. So I feel like, I think I read six books already for this. Still a meaningful chunk of what I wanted to get done. So anyway, I'm gonna put these off, taking them off the TBR but I will talk to you guys in the next day or two to wrap up the experience as a whole. Okay, so we are circling back up uh, to wrap this up. Like I said, of my eight original books, I decided to defer these two because I am really anticipating them, but I am just feeling a little burnout on YA right now. So I'm gonna put, push these to the side for a couple of weeks and come back to them. But I do wanna go ahead and wrap this TBR up because I don't know, I feel like six books is still plenty of info for us to go over. So maybe I'll do like a, we'll start at the bottom and work our way up kind of thing. So definitely my least successful one was Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahern. Yeah, I'm struggling to even remember much about this other than it was so repetitious and just dull <laughs> and a real letdown from the first one. I think I already said this, but I'm not gonna keep going in this trilogy because this really just, it took the wind out of my sails for continuing. Yeah, I think it ends on kind of a bang, but just not, I mean, it had moments of things I liked. I still had moments of enjoying some of the character interactions. It wasn't the worst thing I've read. I finished it though, to be honest, I feel like I ended up skim reading quite a bit of this because it was just so repetitious and boring. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, so this is definitely my least successful one. I would give this two stars. Next one, shockingly, is How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole because I love Alyssa Cole and I tend to usually really love what she is doing. But this particular one, I just felt like maybe if this was a different author and I had lower expectations, this could have been a three and a half, but just because I know what Alyssa Cole can do, I felt like this just didn't execute to the level I know she is capable of. And I did like 
a lot of things in this. I mean, a three star is a B for me. Like this is a B kind of book. It met my expectations. It was fine. But I just I guess it didn't meet my expectations because I have high ones for Eliza Cole. But as like as a book of its kind, it was fine. It just I was hoping it'd be even better. But still would recommend I'm gonna keep going obviously with Eliza Cole because I love her. I'm not sure which one to put next. I guess I would say uh, yeah, I guess I would say Wild Rain by Beverly Jenkins. Again, I give this three and a half stars. It is better like three and a half means it's better than an average historical romance that I might pick up. And I do think that that's the case. I had really high expectations and hopes for this one. So I am a little disappointed. But it was still good. Spring Lee is just such a great character. And I loved all the stuff with her. I felt like her hero was just a little bit of a ween. I don't know. This doesn't didn't really stick with me and just wasn't as amazing as I was hoping because I absolutely really loved this character in Tempest. And then Root Magic. This was really fun. This is middle grade fantasy. And I think that this kind of went there in some of its moments with especially some of the hag magic stuff. But I just felt like this was a really lovely story. Also, this cover is beautiful. And yeah, this was just really lovely. I would absolutely this is something that I could totally see myself giving to my niece for her birthday or something because I think that she would really like it. It's historical fiction at this point. Um, but also like magic. I don't know. This was just lovely. This was like lovely middle grade fantasy that like was thought provoking, heartwarming, just good. I just I don't know. Did I read you when she talks about like all she wants is a friend? That just destroyed me. Anyway, that stuck with me. And then uh, second to highest, I'm definitely going to say a lots away by Darcy Little Badger. This, I think I was talking about this when I was trying to wrap it up, but I have just never really read something quite like this before in terms of its tone. It's such an interesting, like the subject matter is so dark, but it's told in such a sort of like Scooby-Doo mystery gang kind of vibe. I don't know. It's a unique book in terms of its content and tone coming together for a middle grade audience. I was really surprised by this, but in the best possible way. This was just really, really good. Definitely want to read more from this author as she continues to publish. Just overall, four stars, really, really good. And then uh, ending this vlog on a high note was the last book I read, which was Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. And this was just fantastic. This is so devastating. This had really profound things, I think, to say about the endless cycle of abuse that Indigenous women and girls have experienced in America from so many different parts of their lives. I think that this had really interesting things to say about being parts of two different communities and not feeling a part of either wholly and like what it means to find your place in the world in the midst of true tragedy. Very hard hitting. So look up content warnings on this because it really needs like pretty much any content warning you can think of this probably needs. This was a lot, but it was really good. So four and a half stars, one of my favorite things I read this year and definitely my favorite of what I read for the vlog. So overall, though I didn't get through all eight of the ones I identified, I still made a nice little dent uh, in what I would describe as my pile of shame of books that I've pre-ordered or gotten right when they came out and then not read yet. So I think, you know, I feel good about making some progress there. Found a favorite of the year and definitely these top three were really very successful, I feel like. And yeah, just feel, feel accomplished to make a dent in my perpetually gigantic TBR. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed a little different kind of concept for a reading vlog for me. Let me know what you thought of any of the books that I talked about in the comments below. Also, let me know if you have any books that are just staring at you from your shelves because you were so excited about them when they were first coming out and then you didn't read them because I feel like that's the story of my life. Though I did a video recently where I was looking at my most anticipated releases and if I'd actually read them and I did, I actually did a lot better on that than I thought I might have. So Maybe I can cut myself some slack. Who knows? Maybe I'll get there. Anyway, let me know what you thought in the comments below. And yeah, I think that that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye.